Um, I'm standing on, camera mightn't quite pick it up with the sun, the dividing line between hybrid over here and cassia over there. Um, both crops doing quite good, so in middle of October. Now the one thing that I managed to do here that didn't happen in the wheat because of soil conditions, this actually got that product I was talking about insight on the, the Monday between Christmas Day and New Year's Day as it happened. Just to explain a bit further what, what exactly it's doing. The phosphite internally in the plant doesn't perform or provide phosphorus nutrition. Phosphite itself, what it does is it travels very rapidly to the tips of the roots. There it stimulates the cytokinin cis-zeatin. Now that sounds very technical, but very simply, it stimulates root growth. So you get a longer primary root and you get more lateral roots. So more roots, as I said, it gets back to my point, more roots capture more nutrition, but it needs to do that by the nutrition moving in the water, which is why roots will be so important this year if things get dry. These plants, you'd be quite happy with them for this day of the year, considering this only got its first nitrogen about seven days ago, and there's only 30 units on this. Now, admittedly, there is a bit of background nutrition last August with addressing a farmyard manure, which is really standing to the crop. But as I said, we've, we've promoted more roots. What the phosphite also does in addition is it actually triggers more root exudates to be produced, and that in itself helps get more nutrition out of the soil. Furthermore, the, the cis-zeatin actually stimulates the plant to retain phosphate that it takes out of the soil longer in the roots before it translocates it up to the shoots and by doing that it's feeding the roots. So phosphite tells the plant to grow more roots and encourages the, the phosphate that those roots takes out of the soil to stay longer, now only for a limited amount of time in fairness, at the rooting zone in, in the plant to grow the roots even better. Also, phosphite is involved in the plant to encourage nitrate reductase, which is part of the nitrogen assimilation cycle, which the pedolic acid in uplift also does. So it's doing an awful lot of things internally in the plant. Um, this is at the stage where it's ready to follow with the uplift. Sometime over the weekend, it's going to get a shot of uplift, and I said I'm going to give it that same product from Alltech, the Liquiplex MNZNB, which is the amino acids in it, which reduce stress even further. Just a point of note, um, the yellowing we see in crops when a plant comes under stress, and this is where the podolic acid that's both in the insight and in the uplift is so vital to, to how the crop performs. When the plant comes under stress, a lack of podolic acid triggers the plant internally to tell it it's within stress, but it's the external stress that first caused that to happen. What the podolic acid actually does is prime the plant to go forwards again. So where you have a deficiency in the plant of the podolic acid and you apply it through the uplift or through the insight, you're actually priming the plant to go forwards to basically utilize the nitrogen that it's finding to produce more protein, more building blocks within the plant. So it's growth, it's very, very simple. Sometimes when we look at a plant and we see a lot of yellowing, as you often do with winter barley coming out of the winter, you immediately think, you know, it's, it's lack of nitrogen. Most of the yellowing that came upon this crop in February was actually on the top of the plant and all it was was reaction to the weather stress, the very harsh wind and the continuous, continuous rain. The lower levels of the plant, yes, there are some loss of the very lower leaves, but it's actually quite good for the time of the year, as I say. And that's because the phosphite primed the plant to produce more roots and more importantly, the podolic acid actually tells the plant you're not under stress. So that helps massively. So the combination of the two, I'm seeing the results of it here. I know in fairness to you looking at it, you're just seeing the situation today. But within about a week of applying the insight, because fortunately I had a demo pack given who I work for, um, and I was able to apply this, as I said, uh, between Christmas and New Year's, within about a week, I saw the response. It's not too late now. Once you're getting on a plant pre-growth stage 30, you can do an awful lot of good still with roots, but the earlier the better. So ironically, for the latest sown crops we have, those sown in December and even into January and February, they will benefit most, most this year from putting on that insight. Just to briefly mention on weeds here, I said this got its DFF. Um, it has performed extremely well, as I mentioned, and, and I'm just chatting in the wheat field. What I will do here, because there's a nod speed well still visible, um, there's a nod cleaver just around the edges, strangely, given the fact there's a six meter grass margin. This is a field I'll use the Ally Ultra in. So it's just Ally, Cameo and Boxer with it. And that'll just tidy up the few very stray weeds that are in the field. Uh, very simple approach, very kind to the crop. Nothing complicated about it, but I said remarkably the residual herbicides have worked extremely well this year. Possibly 
because the ground was so cold, um, so they didn't break down as quick.